one of them. Yeah, you George Washington, Henry Clay, Abraham, Lincoln, Woodrow, Wilson, Jackson. You them Thompson niggas, quit rolling them bones and come down and get your ice cream. Ice cream? Yes, ice cream. Cut up ass ice cream. Watermelon. <laughs> Hey, Shalom. Yeah, how about you? Shalom, yeah. brothers. Yeah, how about you? Shalom, Shalom. I'll praise you. How about you? How shy? Uh, double honesty the apostles at Great Millstone. This is your brother um, Ayathun, and I'm here with uh, Elder Taz Tazadagba. And um, yeah, man, what we played here is a, a video um, which uh, started off with the ice cream truck tune, and then afterwards um, <clears throat> the original tune played. So as you can see here, this was actually um, as we we're doing this video, we found that a, the brothers from uh, Baltimore actually already uploaded. Um, this information, but so we're gonna use their video. But if you see here on the title, it says "Ice Cream Truck Tune" is actually a racist song called "Nigger Loves a Watermelon." Ha ha ha! Now, if I go back here, right, this is the guy that um, this is the guy that actually came up with the song, Harry C. Brown, and um, you can see it was recorded uh, from 1960 to 21, because this song has been um, it was redone a couple times over and updated. And um, they even had their own numer uh, own terminology for Jake back then, you know, for what we call today, what we call today uh, Uncle Tom, right? Um, Esau used a term for free black men during this time that wanted to be affluent or wanted to be like Esau, right? And they would call him by a term called Zip Coon. Right. They would be called a Zip Coon. Mm -hmm. Today, we call him an Oreo. Well, back in the day... Used to say, "Oh, you an Oreo? You black on the outside and white on the inside. Kind. You really want to be a white person? So in the hood, we would say like, oh, you you an Oreo? You an Oreo cookie? Mm -hmm. You're black on the outside, but white on the inside. You want to be a white person? You want to do everything that white people do? From where from where them tight ass goddamn slacks, where you got that corporate look working up in the corporate look with the attaché, you got the uh, the suit and tie." And, and the tie is nothing more than a, a symbol, which means that you're a mason. Because the, the tie is really Baal Shaft. The god that was worshipped in ancient Babylon, Baal, the tie represents Baal Shaft. The Washington Monument you see in D.C., that long white obelisk that sticks up in the sky, that is also Baal Shaft. That's like an erect penis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's really what a tie represents is Masonic wear. Kind. So these are Jake's out, you know, try to disregard their heritage, right? Like you said, dress dress tight, change the way they speak, take the bass out their voice, try to acclimate themselves into Esau's um in, into Esau's um into his uh into his company, right? So these Edomites back then they had a, a their own term that they came with and they called they would call those Jake a zip coon. And that's this is where that song comes from, zippity doo da, zippity a Everybody knows Zippity Doo Dah, the Disney classic, but it's kind of hard to place which movie it comes from. That's all right. Happy cherry blossoms to you, please. Early Disney films are known for being racially problematic. From particularly offensive depictions of Japanese soldiers in early World War II propaganda. No, 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 wait, please. Japanese customs say, always shooting a man in the back, please. Oh, psychos. <laughs> to Fantasia, where the dark-skinned centaur named Sunflower plays servant to the light-skinned centaurs and has since been cut from the updated version of the film. To the blatantly racist Native American tribe in Peter Pan. But the worst one of all has been locked in the Disney vault for 30 years. The Song of the South takes place on a plantation in Georgia in the 1800s where African Americans and Caucasians live in blissful harmony. 
There seemed to be no problems at all on Grandma's plantation, and that's exactly where the problem is. Like the song Zippity Doodah, the Song of the South is utterly uncomplicated, and it strips away any sense of politics, history, or ideology that would be present at the time. It's never quite mentioned in what time period this movie is set, but it really looks like a plantation full of happy-go-lucky slaves who are more than pleased to do the bidding of their masters. Disney tries hard to obscure the fact that the Song of the South was ever released. Slavery and racism are no longer tolerated in modern society, yet both are still prevalent across the globe. The United Nations estimates that there are roughly 30 million individuals caught up in the slave trade today. Vulnerable people, like young girls and migrants, are abducted at an alarming rate and are sold into slave labor or sex slavery where they are often kept under the influence of drugs or the threat of violence and forced to follow orders. Les chaînes c'est pour les captifs. Les chaînes c'est pour les esclaves qui viennent de devenir esclaves. Mais l'esclave descendant de plusieurs générations, il est esclave même dans sa tête. Et il est totalement soumis. Et c'est malheureusement ce genre d'esclavage que nous avons aujourd'hui. Celui dont rêvait le planteur américain. The Song of the South may be outdated, but these problems are not. Disney paints an unrealistic picture of a Georgian plantation in the 1800s and celebrates that era in the same way that the Western world celebrates the end of slavery. Neither depiction is accurate and both miss out on vital information that affects the lives of millions of people. Zippity doo dah, zippity a. That comes from that terminology, zip coon. Right, and that's the that's one of the main songs of Disney. Zippity doo dah, zippity a. Mm -hmm. That's a, a Disney tune, which is dealing with a zip coon. A zip coon. <laughs> a zip coon. Now, the reason why I wanted to do a video is because this about them coming up with these certain terminologies with scriptures called bywords and these certain songs that they came up with. To make fun of Jake, it was actually prophesied in the scriptures, right? So uh, we're going to go into the scriptures and we're going to show you how the scriptures prophesied that they were going to do uh, things like this, right? All right, so now the book of Job 30, the point is in 9, but I think maybe it's good that we read down into it. Okay. It says, but now Job 30 and 1, they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock because the reason being is because the so-called white man was so vile and nasty when they were in the caves that Job said he wouldn't want to sit you next to his the flock of his dogs because why? You would sit there and have sex with the dog. Mm -hmm. When you look into the history of you so-called white people, you Edomites, in the Rome in, in the Greek Empire, you were uh, laying down with animals. Oh, wait a minute. What about the city of Pompeii? When Mount Vesuvius erupted, and that volcanic ash covered the entire city of Pompeii. When they, uh, when the archaeologists went and excavated the city of Pompeii, there in the houses were there were pictures of zoophilia everywhere. Mm -hmm. A man behind a goat having sex with a goat, a white man, mm -hmm. uh, a dog, or they they had dildos hanging from the ceiling in the city of Pompeii. So Job said, "Whose fathers I would have disdained to set next to the dogs of my flock." In other words, you weren't worthy to sit next to the dogs mm -hmm. because you would defile the dogs. Okay. Right, keep going. Yep, that's how nasty and that's how nasty and dirty they are. You know, that's where that's where bestiality came from. Bestiality, uh, what do you call it? Incest, right? Uh, wife swapping and all that shit. That's some that's something that these Edomites came with. And these Edomites are so dirty that, as you know, that before they came to this side of the world, um, over here in North America. And when they came and they dwelt among Gad, Gad, Gad did not know, did not have one case of the common cold. They didn't even know what a sneeze or a cough was. And when Esau got here, Esau bought what? Was it syphilis? They bought syphilis and all types of different diseases that they came because they're, they're disgusting creatures. You know, they're disgusting creatures and they're regarded as beasts. So Job said those, 
But now they that are younger than I have me in derision. And the word younger means uh, somebody that's insignificant or nobody. You know, like on the streets, Jake will call somebody that's inexperienced or insignificant, they'll call him a youngin. You know, so the word young, young in this context means insignificant or nobody. So them, now they that are younger than I, because where did Esau come from? He came from the caves. Came from the caves. The, the scriptures even call, go far to re, refer him as a no people, right? right? The Most High calls him a no people. So now them that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have not disdained to have set with the dogs of my fly. So these people that came out the caves, that would pick lice off each other, that didn't even, didn't even have a language, right? A structured language that would just make songs. Now these people have come into rulership, right? That's what it means when it says, have me in derision. Okay, so you want me, you going to read on? You want me to read on? Uh, oh, you guys? Yeah, it says, they have me in derision. Right, so now they have us in derision because the scriptures say that the Lord calls us to discontinue from the heritage that he gave us. So what they did was they took and um, they flipped it around. They said, they took the history and they did iconoclasm to all the original art and images in throughout Spain and Portugal and throughout the world. Now they didn't get all the images, but a lot of them they destroyed and they had uh, artists recreate them and make them look like white people when they were really black people. Mm -hmm. So now the Lord said, we shall discontinue from the heritage that he gave us. So now a lot of our people believe that they're African, calling themselves African-American. There ain't nothing African about us. We're not Hamites, all right? We're Israelites. Being a Hamite is one nation, and being an Israelite means you come out of Shem. Mm -hmm. Being a Hamite means you come out of Noah's son, Ham. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, uh, and the Egyptians... The uh, the Kushites, or what you, today you call Ethiopians, um, the uh, the South Africans, the Canaanites, hey. and put come out of uh, come out of Ham. We don't come from Ham. We're Shemitic. Yo, how many Africans did you see at Black Lives Matter? Yeah, wh wh Where, how many of them was there? Where's Africa? Where's the whole big uprise and everything from a to Africa? That's the motherland. Shouldn't he be hearing, talking about Africa all over the news? Right. You know, Ain't nobody from Africa gives a damn because they're not you're they're not the same as a here so called African American people. You so called African Americans, you from the nation of Israel. You go back to Judah, right? Judah, J Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But like as the elders explaining, that line goes back to to Shem. The Africans they go back to Ham. That ancient land, that land of Africa, before it was called Africa, was called what? The land of Ham, because the Hamites dwell there. Yep. Right? We use that verse two. Verse two. Verse two. Yea, whereunto might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age is perished? For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. That was the so called white man in former times. Mm -hmm. And desolate, they were waste, fleeing into the wilderness. Who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat so that's what they were eating and really that stuff right there really preserved them and, and kept them alive because okay. juniper roots is high in what antioxidants mm -hmm. so even with all the foul things that they were eating while they were there those berries a lot of those berries and, and mallows and things that they ate really preserved them okay. because of those antioxidants that's in in that stuff so that really kept them alive okay. And then it says, they were driven from among men. They cried after them as after a thief. Who's the big thief of the planet Earth? Who's stolen everything that you could possibly steal on Earth? The so-called white man. So-called white man. And that's why he's, Esau was kicked out of every kingdom that he went into. You know, especially them so-called Jews. They were getting kicked out of everywhere. So what did they do? This is why they had to get rid of that the Esau, right? You can't find really hardly any history about Edomites, right? And these so-called white people, they'll talk, they'll claim every other heritage, you know, try to be black or try to be a uh, gad, you know, go to the freaking uh, dance, what do they call them, the, um, the uh, powwows, the powwows and, all that. and shit. But how come none of them talk about they want to be Esau or try to be like Edomites, right? Because they want to erase this, they want to erase this history, you know? When you go to high school I, and they teach a history class, I don't remember them teaching about how Esau came out the caves and called themselves called. Caucasians because they come from the Caucasus Mountains. 
They want to get rid of all that history. They're ashamed of that, you know. But it, that is their history. They had no, they had no language. Um, they would eat juniper roots. They would eat, you know. They would bray, meaning they'll just make noises when they communicate with each other. They'll make sounds and noises. You know, you, different books you could read out there that tell you how. Um, what's the one where it talk about how they would pick lice out the, gr the grandmother's skull and all that? Um, that book is by Arthur Kosler, the Thirteenth Tribe, which I don't, I don't. No. Let me see, it's not something else in there. The, um, the Thirteenth Tribe. Is not another one in there? Nah. No, okay. In, in, in this pouch back here? Let me try. Let me see. I might have some back here. Yeah, give us a second. No, I'm checking. I'm checking in here this pouch. Yeah, brother. So, Esau went from that into going into rulership. So, this is what Job is kind of, uh, he's kind of explaining here. All right? So, uh, where are we at? We're at verse... Well, verse 2, you know, I'll read on while you look for it. It says, Yea, whereto might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished? For want and famine, they were solitary because nobody was fucking with them, right? Nobody was fucking with, with Esau because he was a th John 10 to 10. Whenever, wherever he went, he would either steal or he would cause wickedness, right? And cause chaos and confusion. So it says, For want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness and former times desolate and waste who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for meat which is you know like you said very nutritious which sustained them right verse 5 they were driven forth among men they cried after them as a thief verse 6 to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys in the caves of the earth and in the rocks and that's what you so-called white people are known as that's why you call yourself caucasian caucasian, caucasian means cave dweller Mm -hmm. That's you so-called white people Bar none The cave dweller You so-called white people Caveman we, uh, Geico was running uh, uh, commercials back in the uh, What is it? The early 2000s? Uh -huh. And it was the Geico caveman commercials so it, uh, Even a caveman can do it Kind. And the caveman would get offended But he had on a suit and tie like he was modern mm -hmm. But he was still a caveman mm -hmm. Still had that crow magnon look Kind. So that's you so-called white people. You're a bunch of cave people. So the you low, you low bottom feeding devils raised up and became rulers of the entire planet Earth. That shows you that there's a power that's greater than everything on the earth. The fact that you was able to come up and rule. Mm -hmm. Because if it was up to if it was up to us, we'd have kept your ass down during the Middle Ages. And the thing that took us out in the Middle Ages was the plague. Kind. The bubonic and the pneumonic plague, which was called the Black Death. Mm -hmm. And it was killing who? Black people. That's why it was called the Black Death. <clears throat> Go ahead. That is true. Um, where are we? Verse, um, verse 8. It says they were children of fools. Right? Uh, they were, you use that six. Read six again. Oh, to, <laughs> verse 6. To dwell in the cliffs of the valleys, in the caves, in caves of the earth, and in the rocks. And that's you so called white people. That's why when you look at. All of these modern buildings, they exhibit you being in the caves. You were in the caves in the clefts of the rock, high up, looking down low at the valley. Mm -hmm. So that's why you like your buildings, you like a high habitation. The scriptures say that they whose habitation is high. high. That's you. Yeah. Cause that ain't nobody else but you so-called white people. Yep. Because we wouldn't build, was it over two stories? Over three stories. Over and then three. on the third story, you would have like a fence around it. Like a courtyard. It. A fence around it so that you wouldn't fall off the uh, the roof. Kind like so, a rooftop, yeah. right? So on the rooftop, there would be a fence up at the top of the borders of the roof, so you wouldn't fall off the roof. Mm -hmm. So we didn't build structures 10, 15, or twenty stories high. Because it's stupid. If you fall off, then you, you, you're done. You're dead. <laughs> and then when there's a fire, there's a fire yeah. how, how are you gonna get a ladder that long to get yourself out of there? Kind. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's right. So um. Let's read on. It says, um, to dwell in the cliffs of the valley, in the caves of the earth, and in the rocks, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 7. Among the bushes they braid. Under the nettles they were gathered gathered together. When it says under the bushes they braid, like if you see when a horse, and the horse is like... <laughs> or you, you, or you, you see those, uh, those different farm animals there, they're like, that's what it's called, among the bushes they braid. You didn't even have a language. You couldn't even speak. 
if you've seen the movie um uh, 2000 bc quest for fire mm -hmm. and the way that that's exactly how you crack has lived that is the true depiction of you so-called white people mm -hmm. that's your history right there but, that's your history baby it says um <sighs> verse nine <laughs> okay no 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 verse eight it says they were children of fools yay children of base men now you know what the word base mean base means low like a low life right. the lowest of the low that you could find it says they real were scum real scumbags right they were viler than the earth so that means on the whole planet earth they're the most vilest creature you could find it's esau the edomites that's right okay so verse nine it says and now i am their song Yay, I am their byword. Right. <clears throat> now I am their song. Yay, I am their byword. So that's where the song, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, ha, uh, Nigger Loves a Watermelon. Nigger Loves a Watermelon. Ha, ha, ha. And then later on, it's flipped and it becomes the tune that's on the ice cream trucks all throughout America. Because mm -hmm. it goes back to Nigger Loves a Watermelon. Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. So now am I their song? Now am I their byword? Now the word byword the word by word means this if i can pull it up mm -hmm. this, this damn tablet got demons on it <clears throat> it says um by word a proverbial saying proverb one that personifies a type one that is noteworthy or notorious a frequently used word or phrase a epithet now what an epithet is is this I'm going to look up the word epithet, the byword, right? It says a byword is an epithet. An epithet, a characterizing word or phrase accompanying or occurring in place of the name of a person or thing. Mm. A disparaging or abusive word or phrase. That's mm. an epithet. Mm. A disparaging or abusive word or phrase. Nigga loves watermelon. Nigga loves a watermelon. Zippity doo da. Zippity yay. Which was a, a zip coon. Zip coon. A zip coon. I'm gonna you know. read it again. A disparaging or abusive word or phrase. That's an epithet. What they would you call a racial epithet? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, the book of Job. Job 30 and 9. And now am I their song? Yay. I am their byword, right? So now in Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy 30, <clears throat> and uh, one of the curses that was brought on us, I'm going to read Deuteronomy 28 and and uh, 16, you know, uh, 28 and 15. Now, this is what the Lord told us what happened to us if we disobeyed him. Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, <laughs> to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee now one of the curses of the many curses which there are over there are something like 52 or 53 different 53 different curses because when you go down from from verse 16 to verse 68 mm -hmm. basically it's 53 different curses one of them uh, Deuteronomy 28 37 and 38 and thou shalt become an astonished astonishment a proverb and a byword among all nations whither the lord shall lead thee mm. read it again deuteronomy 28 and 37 and thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb and a byword among all nations whither the lord shall lead thee mm. so that's why we are this this devil song job said now am i become their song mm -hmm. where where that is a racial epithet just like even um which we know that the flag the uh, star spangled banner was a song that was talking about slavery and killing black people when you read the the contest of the star spangled banner it goes on to tell you when you go into the second verse of that and esau made that their national and their national anthem is about killing and putting niggas in slavery Okay, you devils, everything in this country got to be fucking torn down. Everything. Because the white man, you are the devil that the Bible speaks of. You are the goddamn devil. And what's <laughs> happening now, you devils are giving, and we, we pretty much, we're going to end it on this note. Okay. Unless you got anything else to say. Um, I, I just want to say that. Go ahead, um, brother. Was that Malachi 4? Mm -hmm. It says that when the Most High hits this place with missiles, 
It will leave neither root nor branch because everything here has to be totally annihilated. This whole land of America is built on top of uh, innocent blood that was shed. It was built by innocent, killing innocent blood, right? And it's still going to this day. They're still killing, killing uh, innocent blood, you know? This is why they got the so-called Black Lives Matter and this and that. <clears throat> so Esau has a history, man. So this place has to be totally destroyed, you know? The scriptures say that the, the blood of the righteous crieth unto him. And the only way that can be appeased is if the uh, the blood of them who shed the blood is, is shed. That's in uh, the book of what? Numbers. And this whole place has got to be wiped out, totally burnt to the ground. And that's why missiles. what's happening in America right now is happening the way that it's happening. Even though we know a lot of it is orchestrated by the Illuminati, the so-called white man, but mm -hmm. really... The Illuminati, who do they get their instructions from? Those different demons that they conjure up and praise, where do those demons get their instructions from? They get their instructions directly from the Most High. From the Most High. See, that's what you don't understand. Who? Okay? The left-hand side that the so-called white man worships, gets, they get their instruction from the Most High because that's the left hand of the Most High. Con. And that's what you people don't understand. And, and the scriptures say this. Um, Job 20 and 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. And that's what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. See, the heaven is revealing your iniquity. How? Through the satellites, the internet, these camera phones. Everything's being recorded. So the heavens, your iniquity is being revealed. Even right now, your iniquity is being revealed with us doing this epistle. And then this epistle is going to be uploaded on the internet. Mm -hmm. And stay up there for as long as it's going to. Because Esau is going to take it down. Because why? It's exposing the beast more and more. It's exposing you devils. Everything in the society got to go. So even with this whack lives matter thing that's going on, which we know is set up by George Soros, it's set up by you Illuminati dogs, right? Mm -hmm. But even though the scriptures say this, I'm going to read it again. Proverbs 20 and 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. Mm. So everywhere, everyone is rising up, whether it's fake or not. Okay. Everyone is fucking rising up against you devils, you so-called white people. Everybody is rising up against you. Mm -hmm. We know a lot of it is orchestrated, but so what? It's really the Most High's hand is still in it. Orchestrated I'm by it the again. Most High. Come. It's really orchestrated by the Most High. Uh, Job 20 and 27. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity and the earth shall rise up against him. Mm. So with that note, if you have nothing else to say, brother, on the subject... Uh, I like to say all praises to Yahweh oh, by Hashem Yahushai by Hashem Kakadash. I hope you brothers got something out this lesson and Shalom. Shalom.